So we're going to go with the quiz breath for five two. We're going to do our five three. We have a, I think, two more, three more examples from no, two more examples from five point two. We're going to do those two examples, and then we'll start with five three. Today, the five three quiz prep number one is going to get put. At two o'clock, we take this quiz that we're looking at with different numbers. Monday, continue on with 5-3, get a start on 5-7. 5-3 quiz prep, the second one will post. Next Wednesday, we review any of the quiz prep questions you have. 5.3 will be the last quiz for Chapter 5A. Finish up with 5-7, take the quiz on 5-3. Next Wednesday, you'll get a review sheet for the Chapter 5A test, which means the 16th, we review. We'll Hopefully, at least take a look at 5B, chapter 5B, the second part. But then Wednesday, the 18th, will be the chapter 5A test, the first test on the first of those four sections, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.7. We, go, we, could, we will go back and do 5.4, 5, 5.5, 5, and 5.6 5, afterwards because that specifically is graphic. I just wanted to keep them separate. So homework would be due right now for 18, two weeks. But your quiz today, we're given the cotangent of beta, is equal to 7 over 25. Okay. Now, it says at the top, this is 18 points. You have six answers you have to come up with. Well, six times three, they be three points each. But what about the one? So here's what it's really going to boil down to is these are going to be two points of these. And the work is going to be six points for the work. First of all, don't get this wrong. If the cotangent is seven over 25, over here. Yeah. There's two points. Oh, and there's another two points. Where? Tangent ends. Look at that. Now four points. The work. I demand that you draw a picture. I'm just not going to mess around with you. You need to draw a triangle. You need to label your triangle. This is what I mean. The cotangent of angle theta. My brain does not interpret cotangent very well. That's why I'm glad I had tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So I need to draw a triangle, a right triangle, and please put theta somewhere. You can't figure out what opposite and adjacent are with respect to theta unless one of those angles, one of those vertices is actually labeled with theta. That way you know opposite is, you know, from what? Adjacent to what? So label either one of the acute angles theta. Now, to like, you know, bottom one right here. It wouldn't matter if you did that one, but just label one of them theta, and now you know opposite over adjacent. This is your 25, and this is your center. That's the picture I would expect you draw. That's what I want to see, because the rest of it is going to be, do you know what you're given? Do you know what you need to do to find what you need? For sine, you got opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, we're missing the hypotenuse. So that work's got to come from somewhere. The Pythagorean theorem. Okay, we're, we need the hypotenuse side right here. So x squared is equal to 7 squared plus 25 squared. 
So if x squared is equal to 49 plus 625, so x squared is equal to 674. And then you take the square root. So the hypotenuse, simplify the radical if it will simplify. That's what you must know. Okay. There's no perfect squares in our square root 674. If it was 672, then yeah, we could do some. But it's not. So that's lowest terms, or that's simplified. Don't be lazy. If you now know what the hypotenuse is, then over here, square root 674. Set up your triangle because it's going to give you all the answers you need. Sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite is 25. The hypotenuse is square root 674, which means you now know that the cosecant is just the reciprocal. The square root of 674 over 25. And then cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent is 7, so 7 over square root 674. And this secant would be square root 674 over the 7. You're done. And then C and a T. So because it's got you know directions say round it to a certain amount of decimal point, that means calculate. I don't know how to work the tool. Use calculated by the decimal approximation the following trick function round to six that. So first question, secant of two to what? That radians or degrees? Radians. We want the secant of two radians. There is no secant button to press. You can't just say secant and then plug in a two because there is no secant button. You have sine, cosine, and tangent, and you have their inverse functions, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, or arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. That just means when you plug in an angle, you take the sine of an angle, out comes a ratio, Inverse side, you plug in the ratio and it'll tell you what the angle is. So you're not going to press these in blue right here inverse side, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. You're not doing anything with them. These three buttons is all you have. So secant is the what? Reciprocal of? Cosine. Which is why question number one really helps out. You look over here, there's cosine and there's secant. They go together. So, what you're going to do is you're going to actually do one over the cosine of two radians. That's what the definition of secant It's one over cosine. So one divided by, and you can just punch it directly in as it's written. One 
one divided by the cosine of two, and then it's wrong. I never checked to see what mode my calculator was taking. And just because the, the quiz prep had radians, maybe the quiz will be degrees and set. But I need to be in the correct mode. I'm in degrees and I'm trying to take the cosine of radians. So that's why it's wrong. I need to be in the correct mode. So I'm going down here. Make sure it's in radian to go back to the problem. And one over cosine two radians is equal to that's that. So this is the answer straight from left to right because I type this in. This is my answer negative 2.402. 9979 And if we round to six decimal places, one, two, three, four, five, six, that seven rounds up to an eight. So it would be approximately negative 2.402998. When I work this thing out, you know, I try to show them the work that I would anticipate you guys would show. Maybe. I actually go, all right, this is one over, and I use cosine to it. Just got to make sure I put it in a fraction and take care of the fraction. But I just do cosine to it. So it's one over negative zero point four one six four six one four six eight three six five. One divided by one over the cosine. This is the cosine of two radians. And now it's go one divided by the last answer. One and divide by my last answer. And there's the actual secant value. If it was cosecant, it would be one over sine. If it was cotangent, it would be one over tangent. But inevitably, I see a secant of two, and all I see is this number, not one over, but just they, they get the cosine. Or you're in the wrong mode, and I get the you get the answer for degrees, but you don't bother checking with it. Okay. It is the easiest problem you're ever going to get asked because it's just punch it up on the calculator, but it's the easiest one to make a mistake in unless you're paying attention. Unless you've actually used your calculator. So we'll take that too. Mention up five point two examples, sixty seven and seven. So from last week, in our 30, 60, 90 triangle,
The short leg is half of the hypotenuse. So if this short, short leg is X, the hypotenuse is twice as big, 2X, and the long leg is square root 3 times the short leg. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have these answers that are always going to be the answer. The sine of 30, X over 2X, is going to give you one half. The cosine of 30 is x squared root 3 divided by 2x. x squared root 3 divided by 2x. The x is reduced. The square root or the cosine of 30 is always going to be square root 3 over 2. And the tangent for 30 degrees, opposite over adjacent, x over x squared root 3 is now 1 over square root 3, which the need to recognize is also square root 3 over 3. These two values are the same. You don't have to rationalize. You can leave 1 over square root 3. Not a problem. You'll, you won't see it in the back of the book, though. They'll rationalize the answer. They're going to have square root 3 over 3. I don't mind if you don't rationalize. You just need to know and remember they are the same. From 60 perspective, if we're at angle where the 60 is, then the sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So x squared root 3 divided by 2x, that's going to be square root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60, so adjacent over hypotenuse, so x divided by 2x, that's one half. And the tangent of 60, x squared root 3 divided by x is just square root 3. The sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60. They're both one half. The cosine of 30 and the sine of 60. Square root 3 over 2. And tangent and uh, tangent 30 and tangent 60 reciprocal to each other. Okay. So those are the ones you need to know by heart, including one more 45 degree angles. So for the isosceles. The legs are both x's. The hypotenuse is square root 2 times the leg. So when you take the sine of 45 degrees, that would be x over x square root 2. So that's just 1 over square root 2. But it will also be written as, you can look at the back. When you rationalize this, you get square root 2 over 2. Because the angles are equal to each other, sine and cosine for 45, they have the same answer. The cosine of 45. So that would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and you still get 1 over square root 2, or square root 2 over 2. And then tangent, tangent of 45, opposite over adjacent, so x over x, the tangent of 45 is always a 1. When you see these ratios, one half and square, square root three over twos, one over square root threes or square root threes, one over root twos, one square root two over twos, you automatically know you're dealing with special angle. You're dealing with 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90. You got to make the connection. They're going to be with us all semester long. 
So when we actually do six to seven, we're going backwards. For 67A and 67B, we're told the sine of theta is equal to one half. You're supposed to figure out what is the one half. Sorry, what is the theta? What is theta equal? And for part B, if cosecant theta is equal to two, what is that theta equal? And it says by each value in degrees and then do the same for radians. So you have to come up with both without using a calculator. So we want the exact value. Anytime I ever ask you for exact value, it's going to be a special triangle. Automatic. Because that's the only exact values we know. So, the sign of what angle is a half? So over here, I know one half is associated with one of my special triangles. Now, the 45, 45, 90. 45 degrees, it's an isosceles triangle. If it's isosceles, you have two equal sides. Sine 45, cosine 45 uses square root two. Square root two belongs to the 45, 45, 90 answers. Okay, square root two goes there because there's two equal sides. 30, 60, 90. The short leg is half of the hypotenuse, so that's a one to two. That's a half relationship. So one half is coming from 30 degrees, and 30 is half of 60. That's kind of nice, too. You've got to figure out some way for you to know which one is which, because I might say this a thousand times this semester. You need to know these by heart, and it never sinks in. Find a way to figure them out and know them by heart. It never sinks in. On the final, we're still trying to go uh, sine of uh, pi over six is what? It's a special line. You're supposed to know it. Make a connection. Three different sides. In a 30, 60, 90, three different angles, three different side lengths. 30, 60, 90 is the one that uses square root three. This is where square root three is used. When it's this kind of special triangle, square root two is used in the isosceles because there's two equal sides. Square root of three is used in the 30, 60, 90 because that's three different sides. Three different angles, three different sides. That's a coincidence. But again, find some way to make sure you don't ever put 30 degrees when you see a one over square root two. Okay? That's what you don't want to do. There's an obvious connection. You don't ever want to use square root three when you're dealing with the sine of 45. Because square root three doesn't come up when you have two equal sides. And again, that's the coincidence, but you've got to train your brain to never, ever go there. It's like being told as a kid, don't touch the stove because it's hot. But you decide to do it anyway. And then you find out you like it. I like getting burned. I like getting these wrong every single test. When I've been told, don't, you know, um, find a way to know which is which. Okay. So right here, we're supposed to come up with what angle sign is a half? Well, half is in the 30, 60, 90. So is the half opposite the 30 or the 60? It's opposite the 30. So beta is 30 degrees. But you got to know this to get that. They go together. They also want the answer in radians. Pi over six. Remember on your quizzes, open note, open whatever you want to have open, just no internet type of devices. So you have a unit circle out, you don't have all the homework examples on, out that you want, it's all good. When it comes time for the test, you don't get to use a unit circle. You don't get to use it either. I don't do cosecant. I can't, my brain, again, my brain doesn't handle the re uh, reciprocal functions in terms of knowing because my brain figured out, don't make me learn a whole bunch of stuff. 
If I know these, I'll know these other ones all the time. Don't try to memorize everything. Know something really well, and then think about it through. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. One over sine theta equals two, which means sine theta is one half. Reciprocal of each other. If I know cosecant, I know sine. So if the cosecant is two, that means sine is one half. And we just did that one. Theta would be 30 degrees still. And it's pi over six in radians. Cosecant of 30 degrees equals two. The cosecant of pi over six radians is exactly two. Okay. Seven years. And given cosecant theta is two squared three over three. So solve the theta. Oh, good. We're going to sign theta is one half. So the answer for 67A is the same as 67 or 70. As I've been telling, I can't, my brain won't handle cosecant. Secant, cosecant, cotangent, I don't have the best answer. So if I flip over this side, Reciprocal of cosecant is sine. That means the reciprocal of this, 3 over 2 square root 3, is the value of sine. Now, according to the list of things you're supposed to know by heart, none of those have 2 square root 3 in the denominator. For sine or cosine or tangent. But I bet that if I rationalize it, might give me one of these. So when I rationalize this, multiply by square root three over square root three, I get three times square root three over two times square root three times square root three. Square root three times square root three is three. That's two times three. And you can see that the three is reduced. So we're actually dealing with the sine of theta equal to square root three over two. That's the reciprocal for square root three over two. Which is why when you have to actually write the cosecant, just put a two over square root of three. Don't make a mess out of it. Rationalize. You have the right answer. Don't make it wrong by taking it further. So where, what angle has square root three over two as its sign? 60 degrees. So theta equals 60 degrees. And in radians, it's pi over three.
remember this warm the prep we ended up with secant of two equal to a negative number secant is a negative number now according to this over here secant is a reciprocal of cosine so cosine is the adjacent side of the hypotenuse well if those are side lengths length is always positive so it'll be a positive over positive no matter what but over here we're getting a negative that's because we're now going into all the quadrants. Everything we've done so far has been in quadrant one. It's all about quadrant one. For this quiz, quadrant one. I'm not going to get anything in breath. But in section 523, we take it to quadrant two and three and four. So we're going to redefine our definition for sine, cosine, Tangent, secant, and cosecant, and under all the other ones. Because it's not uh, practical to use opposite over hypotenuse when you don't have a right triangle. When you're in quadrant one, if this is C, then you can make a right triangle with the x-axis always. And there's your angle, your complementary angle. This is your adjacent to theta. This is your opposite of theta. And this is the hypotenuse. Well, on any circle that's on any graph, on any x, y, four. You have ordered pairs. You have X's and Y's. So on the circle, as an ordered pair, that would be an X and a Y coordinate. Imagine this as a number line. There's the X axis and here's the Y axis. So every point on the circle has an X and a Y ordered pair. This is where they go on the triangle. On the triangle, all the way here, this side, is the length of X. You go X to the right, and then for this point, you would go Y up. So according to theta, which is here in standard position, Opposite, opposite is always the Y coordinate. Opposite is the Y. Adjacent is to theta, adjacent is the X coordinate. So if your sine theta is opposite over adjacent, well then, sorry, opposite over hypotenuse, then according to the placement on the unit circle, Opposite is now the y, and the hypotenuse would be the radius of the circle. The circles have radii, not hypotenuses. Hypotenuse. So the sine of an angle on the unit circle is just y over r. And here's how we get positive and negative values. If I'm over here, this point is the same point over there. It's just a, a symmetry across the y-axis. So over here, this ordered pair would be negative x and positive y. Because you got to go to the left x units versus to the right. The y is still the same because you're going up, so this is still the same. This is not theta. Theta is in standard position. So there's too much going on in that picture. I'm going to draw about all the extra
Theta is always in standard position. That's theta. Theta is bigger than 90 degrees. You don't have Sokotola if it's not a right triangle. But here's the right triangle. The right triangle is always named with the x axis. That's the right triangle. But again, that's not the. So here, let's say we wanted the sine of 120 degrees, cosine of 120 degrees, tangent of 120 degrees. Well, I need to know what this order pair is. This order pair, if this is 120, this is 60. This point is the same as what's going on over here at 60 degrees. The x value is just the opposite direction. You would go positive x to the right and then up y units to get to this point. Over here, instead of going x to the right, you would have to go x to the left, so negative x, and the y is still a positive y unit. The ordered pair just has different signs. The signs change on the ordered pairs. So if I want the sign of 120, all I need is the sign of 60 because the sign of 60 is still the same exact y value over the same exact radius. So whatever the sign of 60 is, that's going to be the sign for 120 degrees. The sine of 60 is equal to square root 3 over 2. The cosine is 120. Well, 120 behaves just like a 30, 60, 90 in here. But whatever happens, this x is the same as this x is just this way. It's going to be a negative one half. Tangent, which is usually opposite over adjacent, well, these are now y's and x's. So the tangent is just the y value over the x value. And if it's a 60 degree right here, the y and the x have a square root 3 to 1 ratio. So it's just negative square root 3. Because we're not using Sokotoa anymore. It's all based on the coordinates, X and Y. Data in standard position. Okay. Data in standard position. Using um, X and Y on a circle whose radius is equal to just R. If we're in quadrant one, and that is your ordered pair xy. This radius is the length of r. This height is the y coordinate. This distance to the right is your value of the x coordinate. Here's theta. According to the picture, the sine of theta is going to be y over r. The cosine of theta, because we're in quadrant one, we can kind of still use that Sokotoa rule adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, that x over r. And the tangent of theta, opposite <laughs> of adjacent, is now going to use y over x instead of opposite over adjacent, instead of opposite over hypotenuse. 
instead of adjacent over hypotenuse. It's based on X's, Y's, and O's. Sine is your Y's. Sine is Y over R. Cosine is your X's. Cosine is X over R. Tangent would still be sine over cosine, which puts y over r divided by x over r. So y over x is what you get from simplifying. That's our new definition. And it's based on coordinates. So when you're over here, the x is the same number, it's just a different sign. And y is still a positive y. If I go down to quadrant three, I have to go left, so the coordinate for X would be a negative, whatever this X is. And because you have to go down, the Y value would be the opposite of whatever that Y value is. Because in quadrant three, X and Y are both negative numbers. And if you're in quadrant four, you go to the right, the same value as this x, so x is the same sign, but you have to go down to get to this point, so the y value would be the opposite of this y value. Okay? Seek it. it would be r over y. Seek it. it would be r over x. And for a tangent, it would be x over y. And just like the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the two legs squared, or the, the sum of the squares in the leg. The radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. But now you have points around the circle. Our first application. One through five, one through six. Fill in the blanks. Using using x and y's and a radius and a theta, fill in the blank. Sine is now one over one. Y over R. Okay. R over Y. So if I have Y over R automatically sine. Y over R is equal to sine theta, sine theta, Y over R. If I flip this over and put R over Y, then what is this then? It's the cosecant. The reciprocal of Y over R would be the reciprocal of sine, reciprocal of sine, cosecant theta. Tangent with respect to x's and y's. Tangent is the y value over the x value, y over x. Secant, well, I know cosine. Cosine is x over r, so what is secant? r over x. And then here, x divided by r, this x divided by that r. Is cosine x over y. Well, if y over x is tangent, then x over y is cotangent.
<laughs> 14 is going to be just like the first quiz question next week for 5.3. You're given an ordered pair right here. So instead of today's quiz, where I tell you, sign of theta is this, find the other five. You're given an ordered pair, you got to find all six. The good news, number 14, they draw a picture point. I'm going to watch you to draw the pictures. So here's an angle in standard position. There's the initial ray, and then it opens up into quadrant three, and it goes right to here. And it goes to the point negative eight, negative 15. And we want the sine the cosine and the tangent of that angle theta, as well as the cosecant of that theta, the secant, and the cotangent. All six. So you now need to remember sine is the y over the radius, cosine is the x over the radius. Tangent is y over x. We have our x and y. What we don't have is the radius. So what we do, make it bigger. All over it. What you should do is see what you're dealing with, see the triangle. That means you might have to draw it yourself. The triangle is always made with the x axis, never with the y, always with the x. Okay? Because when you go to this point, you're going to go left and then down. X and then Y. X left and right, down, up or down. So we're going to make the right angle with the X axis. Label what you have. I don't use the negative 8. I don't use the 15 when I draw a picture because they're triangle lengths. This is just 8. This is just 15 as a length. To figure out the missing piece, we need R. We need y over r, so it's just the value there. r squared is equal to 8 squared plus 15 squared. r squared is equal to 64 plus 225. r squared is equal to 289. Take the square root, and the radius is 17. I'll emphasize it all the time. Don't use the negatives when you calculate the triangle sign, because people will put parentheses. They'll square the, they'll square negative eight, get negative sixty-four. Okay. The radius should never be shorter than a leg, just like the hypotenuse can't be shorter than a leg. X squared plus y squared equals r squared. What are you given? Use your picture. So sine is, now we deal with, with the trig, with the values. Sine is this y, negative 15, this y over this radius. Negative 15 over 17. Cosine is the x coordinate over the radius. So negative 8 over 17. And then tangent is the y value over the x value. Well, here's y, negative 15. Here's 
x negative 8. So negative 15 over negative 8 always reduce. What's a negative over negative? So your tangent is actually positive 15 over 8. So that's something that's kind of important to take a look at. This angle opens up to quadrant three. Sine is negative, cosine is negative, but tangent came out positive. Quadrant three. Do you think tangent is always going to be positive in quadrant three? Yes, no. Yes. If you're in quadrant three, your x coordinate is a negative number. Your y coordinate would have to be a negative number. Since tangent is y over x, when you do tangent for quadrant three, you're going to get a negative over a negative. Tangent is always going to be positive. For instance, as we go around the circle, around the, or, uh, the quadrants, in quadrant one, x is positive and y is positive. All the trig functions are positive in quadrant one. Sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. They're all positive values. But when you go to quadrant two, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive. The x coordinate is negative. So when you do cosine in quadrant two, it's going to be a negative value for x over radius is always positive. So in quadrant two, cosine is going to be negative because x is negative. Sine is still going to be positive because sine would be a positive y because in quadrant two, radius is positive. So sine is positive in quadrant two. Tangent, what would it be? Positive or negative? It's going to be negative because tangent is y over x. You'd have a positive y value over a negative x value. Tangent is always negative in quadrant two. Sine of code. I say things and I think, did I just say that wrong? Sine is always positive. Tangent and cosine are always negative. We already did this one in quadrant three because x and y are both negative. Sine is negative based on y. Cosine is negative based on the x. But tangent would be positive because it's y over. And in quadrant four, x is a positive, y is a negative. X is your cosine value. So that would be a positive x over a positive radius. Cosine is positive. Sine is a negative y here over a positive radius. Sine is negative. And tangent is y over x, a negative over positive. Tangent's negative. So here's what you need to know. First thing you think about when you're dealing with the quadrants, all of the trig functions, all of them are positive in quadrant one. All the trig relate, uh, ratios are positive. Quadrant. X is positive, Y is positive, the radius, everything's positive. In quadrant two, only the sine functions, only sine, sine and cosecant, they're positive in quadrant two. The other, the other ones are, are negative, cosine and tangent. In quadrant three, the tangent ratio, 
is positive because in quadrant three, X and Y are both negatives. So the ratio would be a positive. Tangent's positive in quadrant three. And in quadrant four, the cosine functions, cosine and secant, they're positive. Everybody else is negative. So the acronym has always been ever since I was a little Neanderthal, all of them, sine, tangent, cosine, all students take calculus. If you're taking this class, that's the goal. But all the trig functions, students for sine, sine, cosecant, those are positive. Take tangent, only tangent and cotangent are positive. The other four would be negative values. And in quadrant four, cosine, calculus. Cosine is positive, the other ones are negative. It is so easy to forget what the sign is. You know, it's like G. Is it positive or negative? I see the right answer, but you don't have a negative one you show, or you have a negative one you show. Think about it before you start it. So that's 14. In number 21, they don't give you a picture. In number 21, they just give you an ordered pair. Which is how it would be on your quiz next week. So this 21 is just like next week's spot them. Find all six trade ratios through the point of five negative. Sine of theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, secant theta, secant theta, and tangent. Well, there's X, there's Y. I need the ratings. Draw a picture so you know exactly where it is and what you're doing. What quadrant is five negative one? Quadrant four. Going five to the right of the now. There's your five negative one. There's the angle that we're talking about. Okay. The triangle looks like this with the x axis. There's my right angle. So if I'm going to label my triangle stuff, this right here, is it 5 or the 12? It's a 5. And then this, is it 12 or do I put negative 12? That's 12. And then I'll have to figure out the radius. I'll do that in a second. Once I have this ready to go, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my answers and write down what is the positive or negative. This angle is in quadrant four. What is the only positive trig ratio in quadrant four? Cosine. So if cosine is positive, secant is positive. So these are my two positives. That means these better have negatives in front of them. Take care of the sign so you don't mess that up and don't forget about it. Because now when you want to do the radius, instead of doing this, this is what I don't want. R squared is equal to the square root, or R, R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. So you try to use this X and Y. So R squared is equal to five squared plus negative 12 squared. Well, first of all, that's written incorrectly. When you square this, you get 25, you get 144. But then I, I'll see, put minus in front of that. 
They mess up the sign because they're plugging negatives into that border. And it messes up. Just treat it like a triangle. R squared equals 5 squared plus 12 squared. All I care about is the length of the radius. I don't worry about putting in the negatives and positives into the equation. R squared is equal to 25 plus 1.4. So R squared is 169. Take the square root. R is equal to 13. So sine is y over r, so negative 12 over 13. Cosine is x over the radius, so that's 5 over 13. Tangent is y over x, so that's going to be 12 over 5. And I already have the negative there. And then reciprocal for the other three. Negative 13 over 12, 13 over 5. And five over four. That is just like your quiz next Wednesday. Wednesday. Monday. No. Wednesday. Wednesday. Give you an hour pair, find all six triggers. Don't pass on the That's a threat. Don't guess on it. State the quadrant in which theta lies. Where does theta terminate? Is it in does it terminate quadrant one, two, three, or four? And so on 28, you're told that secant, secant theta is greater than zero, and the cotangent theta is less than zero. So given that description of angle theta, you should be able to determine what is in quadrant one, two, three, or four. So think for a second. What is greater than zero? What's greater than zero? Positive, positive numbers. So C gets positive. And cotangent less than zero means cotangent is negative. Brain does not handle this really well with seeking cotangent. If seeking is positive, that means cosine theta is positive. If cotangent is negative, okay, tangent is negative. Well, it's not quadrant one, because if it was quadrant one, everything's possible. All of it. Quadrant two is sine. Tangent is quadrant three, cosine is quadrant four. It can't be quadrant one because they're different. You can't have a negative, so it's not quadrant one. In quadrant two, sine is positive, not cosine. So it's not quadrant two. In quadrant three, well, here it says tangent's negative, but in quadrant three, tangent's supposed to be positive. So that isn't going to be working. Quadrant four, cosine is positive in quadrant four. Tangent is negative in quadrant four. Quadrant four is the only one that satisfies this given information. So that angle has to be quadrant four. Is 
So let's take it a little more directly. Tangent greater than zero. Is that positive or negative? Positive. What is the only quadrant? Well, there's two of them. What are the only quadrants where tangent is greater than zero? Quadrant one, quadrant three. One and three make this work. Cosecant is sine. This is sine theta. And we're told that sine theta is less than zero, which means negative. Well, sine is positive in quadrant one and two. Sine is negative, must be, in quadrant three and four. This right here, sine is negative, would be quadrant three and quadrant four. So where are both true for each statement? Quadrant three. That's where both statements are true at the same time. And you can see you find all six trig ratios based upon this information. Well, if I know this one, I know the secant, so I know two of them. I gotta find the others. This comes into play, and we will go over that Monday. So we'll stop there and we'll get ready for the series. <laughs> And if you're curious, all this means is the examples I'm going to show you or work with you, 44 to 50, even, you get to pick two of those. 52 to 60, you pick two of those. Here, 84 to 88, only get to pick one example for that. But I'm doing the evens as your examples so you can do the odds at your home. <laughs>